Hi, and welcome to the Integrating Behavioral Modeling with a Mechanism Analysis demonstration. You probably found this link from a newsletter article that was written on September 17, 2008. And the article here is a uh, tip of the week, uh, number letter A here. I hit control key. This is the documentation that goes through this. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is go ahead and demonstrate the power of ProEngineer and how it can actually solve real engineering problems. This newsletter is found at www.pdc.com slash carezone slash archive slash index.htm. What will happen then if you go to that website is you'll get right to here and you can see about nine years worth of very good application techniques for ProEngineer and Windchill. So if you haven't been to this website before, go ahead and check it out. Again, I'll flash that one more time on the screen, slash care zone, slash archive, slash index, dot htm. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and show you how to integrate behavioral modeling with mechanism. First thing I'll do is go ahead and show you how I can drag this mechanism around. It's uh, got a little wobble joint in the bottom that transfers uh, the travel up to the top shaft. This is the reciprocating saw mechanism. I'm going to go into mechanism and simply say play back my motion. And it runs, and it's great. So I've got a driver on there that runs it, or a motor, motor, and it goes ahead and gives me the motion I'm looking for is one resolution, one, one revolution. I'm going to go ahead and say application standard and leave mechanism. Once I come back, to regular assembly mode, that little mechanism analysis is still it's still around. I can still use it. So what I can do first is go ahead and make a measurement of whatever I want to keep track of. And in this case, I'm going to say I want to keep track of this datum point on the end of the shaft and this surface on the end plate. That's exactly four inches right now. And I'm going to save that as a feature. I'm not just going to use that just one time as a quick feature. I'm going to use it as a feature. I hit the check mark and now it's a feature in my model tree. If I want to, I can see how that feature changes by saying motion ana inf or analysis, motion analysis, pick on the distance analysis, it's still, it's still around, hit run, and motion analysis is still around so I can use it and watch how that distance changes throughout the entire um, mechanism analysis. I could click the little button here, add feature, and then I could save it as a feature, which is what I want to do, but I'm going to show you a different way to do it, just to show you two ways to do it. If I go model datum analysis, now I have the wizard that I can go through. Motion analysis is one of my options. Hit next. Same thing as before, I hit OK, close, and now what I have the ability to do is change these max and min distance values to, uh, to create these parameters. And then I can use these parameters for optimization methods. So what happens here is that the motion analysis feature here looks back at the model tree and finds any analysis feature that exists. And in this case, it found that distance. So it gives me the option to make it or not as a parameter. Hit the little check mark here and OK. And now I have captured that max and min during the analysis. Only one last step that I need to do is create another analysis feature. This time, I'm going to say it's going to be called a relation. Let me just use some best practices here and name my feature accordingly. I'll call it motion relation. Hit next. My relation dialog box comes up and I'm going to make a new parameter called stroke length. And what that is going to equal, it's going to equal the feature I just made. It's going to be the max distance minus the min distance. So the maximum value it finds 
minus the minimum value it finds throughout the whole mechanism analysis is going to be the stroke length. I hit OK, and then I move it to the side and hit the check mark, and that's it. Now what I can do is use these for sensitivity analysis and optimization analysis. I'm going to say uh, first sensitivity, pick on sensitivity analysis, and I'll say that I want to change the wobble angle here of 11 degrees, go between, change it, the range between 4 and, and 14, and plot back the stroke length. I hit compute, and then it tells me all the different stroke lengths I get when I make that change. So sensitivity analysis is great. It gives me uh, the ability to vary one parameter or dimension at a time. And I can see really clearly that I, I can go between about 0.33 and about 1.15 uh, approximately. So my goal here is to get 1.04. So what I'll do is go to the next pick, which is feasibility optimization. This uh, menu is kind of big here. I'll kind of move it over to the side. This is going to be a feasibility because the way I choose this is that if I know the answer, I pick feasibility. The stroke length, I'm going to say in my document, I say 1.05. I hit OK. And then the dimension to change is going to be that same dimension of 11 degrees. And I know from the last graph I've just seen is somewhere between 11 and 14. And then one more thing I like to do is I like to change the preferences here uh, on the convergence from 0.5 to 0.001. That way I get the exact answer I'm looking for. Um, I do have to kind of move this to the side to get the compute button to show me. I hit compute and what will happen is I get the magical message there. A feasible solution is found. And then I go ahead and close my box and I can see that it says the model's changed. Well great, I'll just confirm that. And now if I go ahead and look at the feature here and say edit, the feature changed from 11 degrees to 12.8 degrees. So 12.8 degrees is the magical value that I was looking for. And just to make the last little pick here, I'll go info feature and I see that my stroke length is 1.05 as the answer. So that's how it's done inside of ProEngineer. Again, what a great way to, to show you um, uh, how behavioral modeling can be integrated with mechanism. Now, this also goes to other disciplines too. It can be used to integrate with MathCAD, with mechanism dynamics, and to Mechanica. So anything you can measure inside of ProEngineer can be optimized uh, for whatever spec you're looking for using behavioral modeling. So again, this is a very powerful tool that I hope you can take advantage of, and I hope you learned something. Thank you. Have a great day.